research the researchers. Up next, we have an expertly edited documentary wilted down to 20 minutes. Mind Control, the MK Ultra Files, starring Dr. Colin Ross. I first saw Dr. Colin Ross on YouTube over 15 years ago on the channel Psyche Truth. Ever since then, I've been hooked on his work. And even last week, Grand Theft World mentioned Dr. Colin Ross, and apparently, like, they interviewed him at some point, which I think is totally cool, right? Research the researchers. Yes, JB. That's right. Okay, so we are about to go into Mind Control, the MK Ultra Files. This is some deep stuff. This is about assassins. This is about mind control. This is about how they make people into the mind control slaves through fracturing their mind, through creating another personality. It's really creepy stuff, and we are going to hear all about it. Saying that there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Alone fear. Fear is used as a control mechanism to oppress, to keep down, to victimize. there's actually a psychiatrist or a doctor right there interacting one-on-one -on -one with the person who's the target of the subject. The more kind of general global mind control just works by uh, control of the media, control of information, disinformation, propaganda, and I think our culture basically is run like that. It was here that the first halting steps toward mind control began. The shaper and molder of OSS was General Wild Bill Donovan. In this anything-goes atmosphere, Donovan appointed this man, Stanley Lovell, a Boston industrialist, to break new ground in many scientific and technical fields. He later wrote of his OSS job that it was, quote, to stimulate the pex bad boy beneath the surface of every American scientist and to say to him, throw all of your normal law-abiding concepts out of the window. Here's a chance to raise merry hell. It was in this atmosphere that the search for mind control began. The documentation on G.H. Esterbrooks, who was a contractor during the Second War, proves that active mind control experimentation was already going on in the 1941 to 1945 time frame. The Office of Strategic Services, which is the precursor of the CIA, was uh, studying different types of drugs, interrogation techniques, and G.H. Esterbrooks was creating super spies Manchurian candidates using hypnosis and other techniques that were used operationally during the war. And the OSS then was shut down at the end of the war and most of the personnel then became the new CIA in 1947. And the CIA's programs begin in 1950 and run forward to 1973. And then after 1973, everything is classified. Qualifications would be the subject selected to produce the kind of behavior that you wish, the amount of time, the procedures that are utilized, and the motivations of the people who are designing, executing, and administering the procedures. You're asking whether an individual can be, under hypnosis, influenced, coerced, persuaded, shaped, to perform an antisocial act or a destructive act or an act of violence, my answer would be yes. This term, Jekyll Hyde personality, is used repeatedly by G.H. Estabrooks. He, at various times, uh, did seminars on military uses of hypnosis and creating the super spy on a variety of different military bases. In 1943, in his textbook, Hypnotism, and as late as 1971, in an article in a magazine called Science Digest, he describes creating Manchurian candidates, which is artificial multiple personality, just like the Bourne identity. During the Second World War, for operational use on contract, the, the army. He would create 
he, there's Jones A as the original guy, then he would create Jones B, which he called a Jekyll Hyde personality. So he used this phrase Jekyll Hyde personality quite a lot. And an example of an operation would be Jones is called in to see this kernel, and the kernel has been told what the hypnotically implanted code word is, it's the moon is clear. So this guy comes in, he thinks that he's being sent to Tokyo on a routine unclassified courier assignment. He's given the assignment, and then the military guy in Washington goes, the moon is clear. Jones B comes out, the military guy in Washington gives him the classified information, flips him back to his regular self, he flies over to Tokyo, the colonel at the far end says, oh hi, nice to meet you, thank you. That's the above board assignment. The guy at the far end says the moon is clear, out comes Jones B, gives him the information, the response is inserted, back he goes. And he describes these guys having complete amnesia for the operation and uh, being used operationally in a variety of settings during the Second World War. The typical, the artichoke team uh, did interrogations on US soil using the so-called artichoke technique. And the artichoke technique uh, involved uh, IV, alcohol and drugs, interrogations, uh, safe houses, uh, a variety of different techniques. And the purpose was uh, to try and extract information from a foreign person that was being interrogated. And it also describes uh, erasing memories and implanting false memories that will act as a cover for what really happened. There's a, a heading in some of the Bluebird documents called the problem of disposal of subjects what to do with people. And it discusses killing them or the option of using the artichoke technique to erase their memories. MKUltra was uh, part of a series. So it went from Bluebird in 1950 into uh, artichoke, into MKUltra in the 50s, which ran into the 60s. And then it was rolled over into MK Search, which ran into the early 70s. So it's kind of a continuous series of programs. And MKUltra itself was divided into 149 sub-projects. There's actually four MKUltra sub-projects on children. I give the CIA a total credit for sponsoring and initiating the entire consciousness movement, counterculture events of the 1960s. Dr. Timothy Leary, the 1960s Johnny Appleseed of LSD. The CIA funded and supported and uh, encouraged hundreds of young psychiatrists to experiment with this drug. The fallout from that was that the young psychologists began taking it themselves, discovering that it was an intelligence-enhancing, consciousness-raising experience. Company. LSD works on the serotonin system in the brain. The first selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor antidepressant, which works on the serotonin system, was Prozac, manufactured by Eli Lilly Company. So how they developed their expertise in brain serotonin physiology was by being the first manufacturers of LSD. Lilly has been for a long time really committed to discovering and developing medications to help people with serious mental illnesses, uh, certainly including depression and uh, of course Prozac, which is arguably the, the world's most widely recognized antidepressant, uh, has been marketed since 1987 uh, and uh, is the drug which, as several people have noted this morning, is the first and the only antidepressant which actually has a labeled indication for the treatment of children who are depressed. This is a very small quantity of LSD-25, but all investigators report that it is enough to produce a temporary psychotic dissociation state in any healthy adult. The <laughs> God, no! No, no, no! Oh. Get me out of this terrible place! Get me out of here! Help me! Oh, God, help me! We are continuing our experimental work with hallucinogenic drugs such as mescaline, cannabis, adrenochrome, etc. The CIA and the Army uh, and the other branches of the military all kind of operate as a group with a lot of cross-communication. So they developed a series of drugs, one of which is called BZ, 
which is a kind of super LSD where you go on a trip for about four days. In the uh, mid-70s at Senate committee hearings, the general counsel for the Army released a list of about 125 drugs that the Army had tested for mind control. The Army Chemical Corps next provided the opportunity for exploration of the nervous system with more powerful substances, both in the laboratories and in the field, and for the realization of a strong desire to reversibly reproduce and control derangements at the highest integrative levels, including the mind. A lot of these uh, LSD and other experiments were funded jointly by the CIA, by the uh, Public Health Service, and by uh, the Masons, basically, through the Scottish Rite Foundation. The cutout organizations, the front organizations are called cutouts. The Human Ecology Foundation, which was one of the front organizations through which the CIA funneled money to other investigators who often didn't, legitimately didn't know it was CIA money. Well, they were people at obscure institutions like Cornell, McGill, MIT, Johns Hopkins, Columbia, Princeton, Stanford. So these experiments at top secret clearance level were done at basically all the major teaching institutions in the United States. Other army experiments continued on mental patients around the country. Work done at the Tulane Medical Center in New Orleans involved several drugs, hallucinogenics, and electrodes implanted in the brain. The chief researcher was Dr. Russell Monroe, now head of the psychiatry department at the University of Maryland. Was this patient aware that she was being given LSD? Yes, I mean, they, they uh, were told that they would be given some medication, uh, and they should have Specifically sort of LSD? Uh, well, we told them, uh, I don't think that they would have even known what LSD was then at the time. They were told that they were going to give, they would be given some medications which might make them feel worse. They were looking for an incapacitating agent, uh, an agent that would not harm the person permanently, but would incapacitate them temporarily. That seemed like a, a humanistic way to, <laughs> to, to wage a war. Therapies. This def defense disrupting therapy, for example, would have people involved in these very long term group therapy sessions. They might last you know, 48 hours you know, with, with people not sleeping. The idea, of course, here was that uh, by depriving people of sleep for these kinds of periods of time, their defenses and their masks, if you want, uh, would be lowered and people would be able to reveal and understand each other's deeper inner selves. They also used some defense disrupting drugs, most famously LSD, but more commonly they used things like scopolamine or even alcohol to try to get this mask or this outer self uh, peeled away so that the participants in the program would be able to more clearly understand themselves and each other. It was quite fascinating to me and to my colleagues that this program had been going on for such a long time, was so highly regarded, and it was still going on when I first came here in the, in the 70s. By far, the most chilling experiments we have uncovered took place at this Gothic estate called Raven's Crag, halfway up Mount Royal in Montreal. It houses the Allen Memorial Institute of Psychiatry of McGill University. It was here that the CIA funded a series of experiments, severe experiments. The work was done by the Institute's then director, Dr. Ewan Cameron. It is the closest experimentation to brainwashing yet disclosed. His work, unprecedented in psychiatry, consisted of three areas which he called sleep therapy, psychic driving, and the ultimate depatterning. In his uh, psychic driving, uh, so-called, a uh, type of, of therapy, he would give the patient intensive uh, electric treatment in order to make the patient uh, regress deeply, uh, become forgetful, and then he would uh, attempt to implant new ideas uh, in uh, the mind of the patient. Now, to a layman, it would appear that Dr. Cameron was trying to take the slate and wipe it clean, the slate being the mind. In other words, brainwashing. Exactly, that's a very good comparison. Brainwashing. Yes. Right. Psychiatry. The Society for Biological Psychiatry held numerous meetings and conferences and published the proceedings uh, with and without direct funding by the CIA. Uh, Ewan Cameron, who is a civilian psychiatrist 
very politically uh, involved in world psychiatry, became part of the U.S. team that went over to Nuremberg and interrogated the Nazi doctors. While he was over there, he heard about uses of mescaline and hallucinogens in the death camps. Then he came back and did hallucinogen experiments in uh, Montreal. So he literally learned about that from the Nazi doctors. I mean, it's literally Nazi death camp level ethical violations. Pedophiles will commonly tell if it's the person's daughter, this is our special secret, this is how daddies show love. Uh, it's so special we shouldn't talk about it. But actually, of course, they know perfectly well that it's a crime and they don't want to get caught. So it's the same thing with the CIA doctors. They know that it's so outrageous to say, hi, I'm being funded by the CIA. They're trying to figure out how to interrogate people and wipe out memories. Would you mind participating in an experiment where I can help teach the CIA how to do that? It'll never get approved by the Ethics Committee. No patient will ever consent to it. So they have to consciously, deliberately cover it up. The effort to cover it up is just kind of saying that's oh, a funny coincidence, reporting it in the mainstream media. Everybody kind of goes, well, that's good, what's on TV tonight? And it just kind of passes by. And that's kind of the way the cover-up of all this mind control experimentation worked, is it's not that it didn't happen. It was published in all these mainstream journals. And it, at the bottom of the papers, it often says, funded by uh, Department of the Army, funded by U.S. Office of Naval Research, funded by Air Force Office of Scientific Research. It never says funded by the Central Intelligence Agency. But we know that just from reading the journals that it's military funded at a minimum. And I think that the mainstream media is just more and more and more and more of a propaganda arm and less and less and less independent all the time. 80% in Gallup surveys, 80% of people in the United States do not believe that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. So the only 20% of people have bought that story. I mean, we just live in a whole culture of fake stories. Intelligence is nothing really other than information and knowledge. Uh, for the days of Socrates, by various methods, and even before that, uh, mankind has been seeking knowledge of everything that influences his own life or the life of the nation to which he belongs. Uh, but the idea that uh, it is necessarily nefarious, it's always engaged in overthrowing governments, that's false. At no time has the CIA engaged in any political activity or any intelligence activity that was not approved at the highest level. And, and I will not deny that th there were occasions when the Americans involved in these, as it were, out on the front, had, as people do in wartime, uh, to undertake actions that were contrary to their moral precepts. We've had some statements from those who are supposed to receive this testimony that they, they really don't know and don't want to know uh, what the uh, CIA is doing. When I appeared before them again and again, I've been stopped by members of the Congress and said, we don't want to hear about that. We might talk in our sleep. Don't tell us this. What in the world were they looking for with the magic mushrooms? I think the best answer to that is that they were looking for fundamental information on compounds that were, would be capable of causing changes in, in behavior, changes in mental attitude. Did you ever consider what would have happened if any of these substances were given to, say, unwitting people? Oh, I don't remember having considered that specifically. I... What if you... I, I trust perhaps you've thought about it. Uh... Well, I haven't worried about it. I guess I must seem very, very cold-blooded about this, but I don't recall ever having been very much preoccupied with that, uh, with that issue. As this 1952 CIA memo says, the aim is controlling an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will and even against such fundamental laws of nature as self-preservation. 
But some gov governments and corporations, for the first time in history, have the power to basically hack human beings. There is a lot of talk about hacking computers, hacking smartphones, hacking bank accounts, but the big story of our era is the ability to hack human beings. And by this I mean that if you have enough data and you have enough computing power, you can understand people better than they understand themselves, mm -hmm. and then you can manipulate them in ways which were previously impossible. Mm -hmm. And in such a situation, the old democratic system stopped functioning. We need to reinvent democracy for this new era in which humans are now hackable animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. Reveals that they were used not only for drug testing, but to study sexual behavior and how it could be used to manipulate people. George White hired prostitutes to go to bars and pick guys up, bring them back to the safe house, have sex with them and slip them LSD without their knowing it, and the CIA guys would make scientific observations of this through the one-way mirror. And it says in the documents, the purpose of this is to study the effects of an unwitting dose of LSD under conditions that mimic a field interrogation. We're just down at the bottom, it says, it's a lot more difficult than you would think to create these Jekyll Hyde personalities. So Jekyll Hyde personalities <coughs> equals multiple personality equals the Manchurian candidate. So why is there a comment about the difficulty of creating Jekyll Hyde personalities when there's only one contact with each of the Johns, he has sex and he gives LSD? You can't possibly be creating a new identity in that guy. So the only possible person you could be creating a new identity in is the prostitute. These are Manchurian candidate prostitutes who are being run through simulations to see whether they could turn a trick and attempt to extract information from the guy. Them coming for your mind when you least expect it. Uh, mind is precious, so you have to protect it. Guard it with the truth and keep it open to the light. Cause it's the most powerful weapon in this fight. Them use information, misinformation, which information right? Them try to hide the truth so you can stand up for your rights. But knowledge is the key and it will set the people free. So I keep my mind focused, God, them carefully. Like a thief in the night, they be coming for you. Tell me now, tell me what will you do? Eyes on the prize and get ready to move. Are you ready?